Get us away, KA! Two days before my Everesting and I've just driven up the climb just to make sure there are no traffic lights sometimes there's traffic lights on it and make sure it's not just been regritted or like what do you call it like resurfaced because that's happened before where it's just it's just skidding everywhere and then I went out and just stocked up on things that I thought I might want on the ride so I had smoothies bananas and water and then obviously Romney's Kendall mint cake because I eat that on all my long rides and I was averaging maybe one of those bars every 60 to 90 minutes and actually in the end that was literally all I ate I just had that and then I had bagels for like something savoury oh, got a bit of a late night panic going I say late night it's only half past eight um I've decided to actually change the segment so the actual like segment that I've always kind of ridden it has got like maybe a kilometer maybe a bit longer of a, a flat at the top and that is pointless I've realized we've worked it all out had like a spreadsheet going um and seeing how long it's going to take and how long the distance is going to be and just by taking that flat section out it's changed it from like 340k total to 280k and actually it's just a waste of time because what's the point in riding flat to the end of that segment and back because it's just it's an Everest, I need to be going up or I need to be going down. So that's gonna hopefully save me a lot of time. So now I'm just like, oh my God, which segment am I gonna do then? And there is actually a segment called Duff Stones Climb, which is literally just to actually where the, the climb stops. So I'm just trying to figure out where that actually ends on the road um, because I've never actually necessarily done that segment. I've done the segment, but obviously not known I've done it. So I'm potentially gonna go back out in the car now and set it on my wahoo obviously i'm not going to keep it um but just to kind of know where the segment starts and ends so that on the day i know where the hell i'm riding god that, this seemed like a lot simpler in my head but i'm glad i figured that out now rather than on the day and being like what a waste of time riding on the flat and riding back on it um so yeah that is where i'm at and yeah let's go back out in the car and figure out where the hell the end of this segment is And then also the prep in the days before, I was just basically making sure that I was eating loads of fruit. So I was having smoothies, banana and ice cream. And then one extra thing that I was having was spirulina, which I generally have anyway, which is there. And it's just really high in iron. And I just wanted to make sure that my blood was all good and ready um, to go for the ride. And then another thing that I was prepping for probably two weeks before was checking the weather, making sure that I had definitely got the best weather day for the Everest. So this is the bike set up. I thought I would go through everything that I had for the Everesting. So uh, the bike that I chose was my fave. It's the Ribble SL Caliper. I just absolutely love this bike for climbing. It's amazing, it's light, it's just stiff. It's just, I love it, love it for climbing. And what else? So the tires that I use are the Michelin Power Road 25 mils. And that's just because they're really fast and they're just really grippy so yeah they were perfect and gearing let's talk gearing so this is the normal setup that i have i have a compact at the front i've got um shimano Tegra, so a 50 34 at the front and then a 40 cassette at the back however i didn't go anywhere near the 40 40 um cog because it's just like a really steady gentle climb like six percent so for the majority of it i was actually i think i was in um the 31 for the majority of it unless i was descending so yeah that worked really really well lights wise because as you saw earlier on the climb was literally there's no lighting on it near that towards the top it's just pitch black moorland um and so i had the exposure blaze on the rear which is just so bright. I think you can see it from like a couple, maybe a kilometre and a half away. So it's just really, really good, really good battery. And then I also had the Exposure Strada. And that is just, just brilliant for lighting up the whole road. So especially on the descents, it was incredible because obviously if you're going fast and it's pitch black, you want to see where you're going. And also the thing that I like about the Strada is that it's got um, 
I've talked about this before, it's got the actual how many minutes and hours you've got left battery wise. So I knew that I was never just gonna cut out on the pitch black descent. So that was a really good um, bonus of using those. So that's what I had. Um, in the day, I actually used the, oh, what are they called? I'll leave a link to which ones they are, but I, I switched them over. I used those in the dark and then the exposure trace and trace are in the day so i switched those over just because i just wanted something just to keep me visible even when it was light um another thing that i did use and this is this is the only thing that i actually changed from my regular everyday riding setup was the pedals so normally i use um mountain bike or the kind of gravel shoes of the shimano ones and for this i decided i wanted to go back to road shoes and road pedals so yeah, these are the Shimano SPD SL. And I also has the S-Fire shoes. In fact, let me grab them. They're just here. Ow, sorry about that. I've just kneeled on my knee and you know that like, I got a scabby knee. Ooh, let me get back. Yeah, so these are the shoes that I used. These are the S-Fire, they are so comfortable. I mean, my gravel ones are comfy, but these are just like next level comfort. Those, and the reason that I used those was because I knew I wasn't really going to be stopping to wander around a lot, which is why I generally use um, gravel shoes. These are lighter than my mountain bike shoes, gravel shoes. So I was like, any little weight saving I'm going to get after doing however many reps, every little bit of weight you're going to feel. So I thought I would do that. One thing I wouldn't recommend, these didn't have cleats on. Um, so the night before, I uh, was like, oh, they've not got cleats, so I better just chuck them on. So I didn't really test them out to make sure they were in the right place, but yeah, <laughs> they were fine. They were absolutely fine. So yeah, so that is the bike set. What else? Oh, I actually took one bottle cage off as well. I mean, that's how extra I went. I was like, I only need one bottle. Um, so I just had one 500 ml bottle. Um, but yeah, I just kept, kept changing out. And then, yeah, that is pretty much my setup. So the aftermath of the Everesting, I've got to be honest, I was as surprised as you probably are of how fresh I felt at the end. All day, all I kept thinking was, I just kept, I just kept panicking, thinking that like, what is it going to really hurt? And I think um, the reason that it didn't was because, well, a few reasons. The main one being, I think I feel like I've like lifted my like pain threshold for cycling. Uh, just because of the longer rides that I've done and being out all night, overnight, and doing like three, four hundred k rides, and then equally, the gradient. I, I purposely chose that climb obviously because I love it, but the gradient is really steady. I think if it had been a really steep climb, that would have just taken it out of my legs way, way more and way quicker. Um, whereas that climb, I was able just to kind of just do it quite steadily. And yeah, so what I've been doing like. Um, like part rash, hard knot, you can't really do them steadily. You just have to just put everything you've got and that is what like just batters your leg. So this climb I wasn't, it wasn't like that. So I could just take it steady. And yeah, I think that was why I felt like so good. And equally as well, I wasn't smashing up each like time. I was just kind of just, just taking it steady. Just wanted to, I basically just wanted to finish the thing. I didn't want to like do it in like a set time. I was just like, I just want to do it do it comfortably and enjoy it. And I've got to be honest, it's one of the best days out I've had on a bike. And I think it was because as well, it just made it so much more fun that people came to see me. And so my friends were there like cheering me on and you wouldn't normally get that on a long ride, especially like when you're doing it solo. So I don't know, it just seemed to, it seemed to go really fast. And yeah, I just, I just enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, so the day after, it's been a few days now um, since I did it, but the day after it, I my physically, my body felt fine, but the only thing was I was just a little bit sleepy, so I just slept a little bit longer, but I think that was just because I um, had obviously got up so early the night before, so I think it was just catching up sleep, but yeah. Um, what I would say if you are planning on doing an Everesting is, I mean, I've only done one, I'm not an expert at all, is I would just try and pick one that's, if it's your first one, I'll just try and pick a steady one. Um, nothing too steep, just nice and gradual. You want the balance between it being gradual, but not too gradual that you're gonna have like masses of distance. But yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So who knows, maybe I'll 
do another Everest in. I reckon then that is it for this video. Thank you so much. If you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments and give it a like if you like the video and subscribe. I never, I never say to subscribe, but yeah, if you want to subscribe, that would be amazing. And I'll see you next video. Oh, that's so bright. Shift them out of the way. Anyone else really like eating out of mugs? I always have cereals out of mugs, soup out of mugs, pretty much all my food out of mugs. I just like eating out of mugs. <laughs>